Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wealthy Idiot Show. My name's AJ. We brought in Jeremiah Harding. In the last few episodes, we've been talking about uh, currencies in terms of cash, gold. We've talked about crypto and we talked about how it may not be a good idea to keep your money in cash as that is continually being devalued and inflated out of value um, over time. And we compare that to what crypto looked like in terms of whether or not we should be investing or holding our money um, in what type of currency. So today we wanna to bring in Jeremiah. Jeremiah is uh, staunchly anti-state and anti-central banking, and who better to bring in to talk about what the central bank is up to in terms of cryptocurrencies than someone who is constantly researching this. Not too long ago, he predicted that the central bank would attempt to make their own cryptocurrency to try and regulate the market and control what crypto might look like and uh, he's here today to kind of fill us in. So, hey, Jeremy, welcome to the show. Give us a little brief introduction about yourself. Uh, basically, I'm a cynical, pessimistic conspiracy theorist. Um, I have been routinely called the most aggressively negative person on Liberty Twitter because I'm all about handing out those black pills. Uh, I talk also excessively about um, the, like, global conspiracies, I guess you could say, of banking, uh, you know, sort of secret and less than secret societies um, operating in, I guess, the shadows. Um, you know, I, I, I do all of this through the lens of uh, panarchism. I, I want, like, as best uh, an opportunity for all forms of anarchy to thrive so that they can, you know, compete and or, like, just peacefully coexist if they choose um, because I think the state is a fundamentally evil machine of brutality and corruption and I think that it's necessarily going to end in rivers of blood and years of darkness the likes of which would make Revelation look like a children's story so <laughs> all right well we appreciate you coming on um, we want to remind everyone this isn't a political show however when you're looking in terms of cash, as we've been talking about recently, we want to look at it in, uh, we've been talking about how cash is being inflated in order to move wealth from, you know, people who don't have assets essentially into people who have extreme amounts of assets, including a lot amount of leveraged debt. And so who better to bring in than someone who has the viewpoint of the state is basically engineered to move that money from one group to another in a way that's, you know, fairly i would say immoral at best does that sound about right yeah i would say running a global uh, panopticon style tax farm is pretty uh, unethical like so the the goal of the the fiat currency in general has always been fiat which is let it be done it's an order it's you're going to consider this valuable at the value that i value it at or else uh, you won't be able to participate in the market will freeze you out, will sanction, will uh, fucking all these things um, that they do in order to basically control markets. Um, they do because the root of the system is fundamentally their control mechanism. Um, now, currency doesn't have to be that necessarily, but it always has been in history with with very rare exceptions because it's always been issued by some sort of authority and it's always been accepted um, on the grounds that the authority will enforce contracts and shit. So essentially, um, what, what I see fiat currency as um, is, is, is like one of the steps, the, the, the lily pads, the eventual end goal of uh, total enslavement. And um, I also see the uh, specifically the U.S.'s plan uh, to create a universal privacy-free dollar um, called the CBDC uh, as the end goal right there. It's the, it's the end game. It's the kind of thing that, uh, that, that Alex Jones was predicting, David Icke, like all these people you're supposed to hate, um, and like sort of following along their, their lines um, I started to notice patterns. Um, and also, of course, like to me, one of the gold stand I'll list two gold standards in terms of this information uh, that, that I relied on for a significant amount of it, um, which, which were True Stream Media and uh, Corbett Report. 
and also uh, activist post the Free Thought Project, all these like excellent like projects trying to isolate as much information about the evils of the state and their control mechanism into one place as possible. And like when you start to go down these rabbit holes, you start to realize that not only are there stories that the state uh, doesn't want you to know, but there are also stories that they plant so that you'll get stuck at a dead end and you'll stay there. Um, so like they don't want you to do much research beyond the surface and they'll try to keep everything as surface level as possible. Even on the surface though, there's stuff you can find out. Like when I heard about ID 2020, I immediately started to research it and I went to the ID 2020 website and found out that they were partnered not only with Bill Gates, uh, and the Gates vaccine, uh, initiative Alliance. I don't fucking remember right now. Um, but also the Rockefellers and, uh, Accenture blockchain technology, um, and Microsoft because of course, uh, but they also have a significant amount of other partners that are equally as like Orwellian and evil, but it, effectively they, uh, they started to work with, uh, all of these people in an attempt to um, create a permanent uh, ID system. And I thought blockchain ID, that's going to come with a transaction network because that's how blockchains work. So this blockchain ID that they're that they're planning, I have to look into it and see if they're also planning a money system based on that. And so I did that. And wouldn't you know, Accenture is also on the board of the digital dollar project and they're both coinciding and being launched at around similar times um so i connected the dots and i said hey this is going to be really fucking bad and basically nobody read it and those who did mostly called me insane so <laughs> two years so, later they're talking about in public let's rewind you a smidgen so on this channel we talk about getting your money out of cash and we've even talked about things like leverage so taking out loans in order to buy things like real estate, right? Cause you can make more money in real estate than your, uh, than you're paying an in interest on that loan. How does, how does the, the groups in which you're referring to like the Rockefellers, Bill Gates, how are they using cash in order to manipulate their leverage into success? Well, I mean, that's how the elites work. They, uh, <laughs> they always hide their money in assets and uh, real estate, cars, um, mm -hmm. boats, planes, they'll always do this sort of thing and they'll do it in order to make sure that their money is in something. And like, not only does it help them dodge taxes and regulations and, uh, you know, hey, here's a, here's a gift of this fucking alabaster statue of uh, a, a, an eggplant so you should put this in your foyer, and uh, it's also got some diamonds on it that are worth the amount of money I owe you, that sort of thing. Um, but, like, in terms of specifically real estate, like, yeah, I mean, BlackRock is a good example of that. Those vulturing parasites uh, control a significant amount of uh, the global real estate market, and they also have one of the biggest indexed funds, uh, which means that they control a significant amount of global finance along with it. Like they know what they're doing. So if it works for them and you can avoid pissing the people who control things uh, off enough, uh, then sure. Like it's, it's a good idea. Um, like specifically like related to CBDC and all this stuff like Gates, uh, who's affiliated obviously with the Gates vaccine Alliance and who was previously affiliated with Microsoft he literally just bought, uh, mo like, he, he's now the single largest U.S. owner of farmland. Mm -hmm. um, and we know why now, because suddenly a bunch of food plants are going bust. Uh, suddenly a bunch of uh, accidents are happening. And uh, all of these accidents that are happening, totally accidentally, they are happening coinciding with the, the single largest wealth transfer in history. And Bill Gates buying all this far farmland. Um, so now, uh, when he starts to control all this farmland and use it for those purposes, uh, he will have keys to the kingdom in terms of food production. In uh, a world of dehydrated people, the man with a bottle of water is king. 
So, like, you know, maybe we should be concerned fucking about that. But, like, the whole point is that, like, yeah, I mean, if if it didn't work, they wouldn't be doing it. They know mm. how they built this system, and it, it definitely works. So it sounds like they're doing what it is that we're teaching people to do here, which is, I mean, we like to hear that. And they have an invested interest in making sure that that continues. So tell me about, like, how does Bitcoin compare to the U.S. dollar? So exclude CBDC for the moment. How does Bitcoin compare to the U.S. dollar? And why would that be concerning? Well, so the, the thing about Bitcoin is that it can be good and it can be evil. Um, if you're looking for a long term store of value. It might not be great because it's good for investment spikes. It's good for like the hodlers. Um, but people who like want this, if, if, if you're valuating your stuff in U.S. dollars and that's how much you have, like you know, valuated in U.S. dollars, then when the U.S. dollar collapses, you'll suddenly have a lot less assets. Um, hmm. Now, here's the thing about that. It's a better form of currency for everything privacy related and everything um, like like security related than the dollar, which is why it's consistently ri risen in value even during these times over the dollar and why the dollar is seen a steady decline because there's a fixed supply and like a way to earn it simply by participating in the network. So there's network incentives, there's, you know, trustless interactions um, and like a distributed ledger with like proof of work. It's very good for what you want if you want a security uh, asset for like let's say less than legal purchases. And if you also want something where you can like transfer value between people fairly quickly um, versus a bank system and internationally and with very low fees. Um, and like, so those are all true. And then it's also a data storage method. And Jack Dorsey, uh, the Twitter guy, uh, is literally working right now on a decentralized web platform that will be based on the Bitcoin blockchain. So, like, it has a lot of potential for a lot of stuff. I would, I would just say that the way it's currently used, people are going to be disappointed if a collapse happens. But then, even then, it's better, like, post-collapse because it's already an in-house currency. So all people need to do is connect as many nodes as possible uh, through mesh nets um, and, you know, shortwave radio, fucking microwave signals, all that sort of thing. They can do that um, and rebuild the network, like, pretty easily and simply. You can't do that with the dollar because the dollar is a giant fucking Ponzi scheme run by fucking Jeffrey Epstein's friends. So, ultimately, like, the... The dollar is designed to collapse. The dollar is designed to rack up debt. The dollar is designed to turn us all into passive consumers and slaves. And Bitcoin isn't. Now, there's also the fact that Bitcoin can be misused. Like, El Salvador is misusing Bitcoin right now. I am unpopular in certain libertarian circles for saying that. But once you make it the official national currency, you basically say... Um, we're going to watch all of your purchases on this blockchain. You can't do anything else. There's no transfer to other assets. You need to use Bitcoin if you use anything. So we can watch you now. Mm. Um, that's bad. It's, it's bad, um, even though it's helping the rest of the world in terms of their own Bitcoin use, because it's obviously running massive amounts of nodes off of the volcanic uh, energy. Um, and even though it's helping, you know, improve the image of Bitcoin and people who don't understand it, um, like the ultimate thing with the El Salvador situation is it's being used for tyranny. But in non like in places that aren't like that until they get a CBDC, which is being rolled out globally soon. So uh, you might want to deal with that as soon as possible if you're going to deal with it. Um, but like. 
Bitcoin can be used for like more freedom oriented purposes elsewhere using something what like wasabi or samurai. So I mean there's like things you can do if you actually care about privacy. Um you know so like you've got the the sorry to interrupt. Why is the um why is things like Bitcoin then concerning for our wealthy elites? What are they worried about? They're not. They're pumping and dumping. They're liars and con artists and they constantly invest in the lows and cash out in the highs elon musk is a prime example of this with his dogecoin mm. scams because basically he constantly says oh yeah cryptos are bad for the environment plummet actually because we're facing the other way plummet you know fucking it's so bad for the environment plummet 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 elon musk buys at a low Hey, we're going to start accepting Doge at Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> and so they don't care. It's it's a big scam. It's lies. They're profiting off of the people's ability to panic quickly. Okay. So for um so we, we've said a few times now is it CBCD? Is that correct? CBDC, Central CBDC. Bank Digital Currency. Central Bank Digital Currency. Okay. So what's the purpose of Central <laughs> Bank Digital Currency? If we already have things like Bitcoin. The purpose of central bank digital currency is to tighten the noose around all of our freedoms and turn us into unthinking slaves. Um, the it's it's not a publicly auditable blockchain. It's private. Mm. Uh, it's only visible to those in control. It will be attached to a biometric identification system that treats people exactly like uh, cargo to be shipped. That's the they they put people right alongside uh, things in their white papers about it. It's just a matter of like tracking human cattle like fucking boxes of Cheerios. So like they are creating a global infrastructure for blockchain uh, technology to be used, but they can't have it be free. They can't have it be something like Bitcoin or BCH or fucking pirate chain XMR. Uh, they, they can't have it be something which you can obscure or which is obscured by default. They will obscure it from you and they'll be able to see everything by default and you will be hooked up to a biometric identification system by your face. Um, and they're already like Flint, Michigan cops years ago started to get what they were joke, jokingly referring to as RoboCop helmets, which were what I was saying would be fucking there. And nobody hmm. believed me because I get to be the insane person people dismiss. Um, so, like, I, I kept on saying they're going to start using the same technology that they're using in China. And in China, they have head-mounted cameras that are constantly looking at facial recognition databases uh, and scouring hmm. the environment for people that they don't like. Um and I said, that's going to happen in America. And people said, no. Um, and turns out their no didn't mean shit ass. So, like, ultimately, <laughs> the the truth here is that the facial recognition dystopia is coming. Um, and they are going to use facial recognition to track wherever you go, your spending habits, your personal associates, all of that. And they, all, they need it to be affiliated with reliable transactional data in order to say, this is you, this is what you did. So CBDC. Mm. So that's the last step in their equation for total global enslavement. I, I set up a, a wallet recently and not for a CBDC. I set up for, um, I think it was Ethereum and all I had to, I, I didn't have to, enter any data about myself it just gave me a key that i have to hold on to so i essentially have keys to a wallet what you're saying is in the cbdc uh concept the key is going to be something about me specifically which is now going to identify me in part of the system no it's it it's going to have a normal key but they'll have access to it and you won't as far as i'm aware and mm. um when when they access your information it will be stored on the same like ID string. So like effectively the blockchain system will be a two tiered blockchain system, one for identification and one for money, and they will both be connected. So it, it's less that 
the the key will be different, and it's more that the the data stored associated with the key will be different. Okay, so if um, like we were talking about before here, the idea behind crypto being uh, somewhat anonymous, not that your transactions are anonymous, but that the end oh, they user can be. of the wallet is anonymous, right? In this yeah, case, they, it well, sounds and, and, like and they, they all can that... be, by the way. If you get something like Wasabi or Samurai. Okay. So other other kind of, other forms of, of coin other than like Bitcoin. Is no, no. Saying. Wasabi and Samurai are wallets that you use ah, uh, to okay. do less than legal things. And what you do with them, they're called... Um, we don't they're called, for uh, that. Yeah. We want you to don't use it legally that. just for privacy. Yeah, right? Okay, just checking. But if you did <laughs> want to do it for, for, for these sorts of purposes, which you definitely shouldn't do... Um, or if you just want more privacy in your Bitcoin, you do what's called a, a coin join, and mm. it merges your transactions with a bunch of other transactions, and then they all shit out in the same direction, and the feds can't track it as easily. You can coin join multiple times even, and it basically launders whatever you're doing. So would that be something that's eliminated with CBDC? Um, I mean, it might eventually be because the initial transaction would be too suspicious or something like that, but like I, I kind of, I kind of think that that might still happen because it's not exactly like you can track who's coin joining and who isn't uh, with any sort of reliability. Um, and if you keep on doing it, if you just strain it multiple times, the only thing that they can do is say that you suspiciously deposited. So mm. I mean, there's that. But ultimately, like if this happens, we shouldn't wait for their permission to do anything and i'm not going to say what that means because i think your audience can fill in the uh fill in the blanks so like ultimately for now you can obscure your transactions by coin joining uh or or like cash shuffling with bitcoin cash or there's like other ways or you can use something like xmr which has built-in anonymity or pirate chain which has built-in anonymity and zk snarks so like you have options is the, is the thing. Like even with Bitcoin, you have options to privatize your, your transactions. Um, the point of Bitcoin was always to have a decentralized uh, ledger that's publicly available, but that doesn't mean you can't fuck with it. So, mm. you know, I mean, there's even options there. So if Bitcoin already exists and it's already doing the job, what would be the point of setting up a new... Like, what's the advantage for the banking system to set up a new coin for themselves? Well, it's not doing the job that they want it to. We can all mm. audit the Bitcoin blockchain. If they can, if they're the only ones who can audit it, they can basically do whatever they want to you and say that we connected your transaction ID to blah blah blah. Um, you know, so we we're flagging you for suspicious activity. It wasn't mm. Orwellian enough before. And they needed to add that extra layer of fuck you freedom to it. That's the point of it. The whole it's it's literally just slavery coins. You know, here's your here's your 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 tokens for participating in our centrally controlled economy. Uh, kiss your privacy goodbye. Eat shit. So if we if we as the end user of these items have a better advantage towards Bitcoin as opposed to you know, taking something that has this extra layer of controls, why would we go that direction? Because most people don't give a fuck. And the vast majority of people, if, if they say, this will be accepted at all these major retailers, because those major retailers mm -hmm. are affiliated with the Bilderberg Group, the Trilateral Commission, Davos, Elite, you know, all these fucking shady organizations. Um, you know, all these people that have been planning this for years, which I proved years ago, um, and which, you know, people like Alex Jones have been on the ball of since like the Endgame documentary and a little bit before, um, you know, all of these like sorts of uh, mega corporations who have a vested interest in the status quo and suppressing rebellion would be like, yeah, sure, um, we'll accept this coin. Because that'll help us maintain our market monopolies that we created using the state. And so, like, effectively, um, the common person will just be need to told, hey, these this is accepted at these major retailers. Um, and this is accepted there, here, 
we'll give you this. We're sorry for fucking the economy. Uh, we'll give you a stipend. You can go spend that there if you want. Um, don't rebel. So there's that. And also, because this is the reason they're so okay with being so carefree with inflation and the dollar and shit, this is a global initiative. And part of the reason is they, they're in an untenable amount of debt and over leveraged in certain areas and 30 mm. trillion dollars cannot be fucking repaid and they know that so how do we do this we make it so that the system is engineered to collapse and then once it collapse we pick it back up with our brand new currency it'll no longer be the u.s dollar the u.s dollar is dead long live the u.s dollar it will be cbdc because it was always going to be that this has been the, the control matrix since, you know, Jekyll Island. Mm -hmm. And so the whole issue of the whole issue of, of like, why would they do it? Because it lets them kick the can down the line, prevent rebellion, quell dissent and enslave people. They're evil. These people are blood sucking evil monsters. And I hate them. <laughs> um, and they're trying to build a control matrix. That's why they're doing it. Okay. So for our, for the individual viewer, someone who's just trying to make sure that their financial situation is set, what would you tell them as far as how to interact with crypto and or CBDC in the future to get the best outcome for them? So my best uh, advice about interacting with CB CBDC is don't. Um, and I, I'm pretty much going to leave it there because like people shouldn't touch the mark of the beast. And that's what this is. They want you to look everywhere you go and see a little screen that you can th that you'll be looking at. And like you'll you'll see this screen and you'll place your face in the circle. And oh, I just did my purchase. That was so simple. I didn't have to use cash or get dirty. It, it was contact free. I'm so afraid of covid, um, you know. Ah, it's so refreshing, you know, they want that everywhere. Um, so the, the more you can say no to that, the better, uh, say no as much as fucking possible. If they can, and, and then like, there's also the, 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 the overarching aspect of like, they, they can control dissidents by shutting things down. If they can cancel an entire country in the form of Russia or an entire protest in the form of the trucker protests, maybe they can, fucking cancel you too so don't interact with cbdc if you can all avoid it um try to be as agoristic as possible agorism is samuel edward conk in the third's idea of using black and gray markets to choke the state try to leverage that as much as possible or do something more in the range of like you know primitivism like like small scale decentralized colonies that sort of thing where you can just trade and have a co-op, a commune, anything you want to do that gets you away from them is a good investment. Um, and as soon as possible, get that going um, because the CBDC is fundamentally evil. Um, but also like in terms of cryptocurrency, like right now, uh, BTC, BCH are good options at a, at a starter level for getting into like privatizing your own transactions and having some of them public btc is still the the ultimate like sort of hedge so if you wanted to filter some stuff from uh, your totally legal accounts into those you could do that and uh filter it through something like wasabi so that it would be harder to track um so there's those elements of it um and then there's the um you know you could go with xmr which is Monero, and you could do privatized transactions by default. You could do um, Pirate Chain, which is privatized transactions by default, and mm. ZK Snarks, which is a really good way to be private. Um, you could do things like that and throw your money at cryptocurrencies you understand, learn mm. as much as possible, um, try not to go with uh, with with um, non-custodial keys, like own your keys, you don't own your coins, fucking like don't keep them on exchanges and touch exchanges as little as possible little things like because the thing about 
cryptos is that they're supposed to be distributed ledger technology. They're supposed to be decentralized. And the ultimate truth that I constantly say is that centralization is the enemy of freedom. The more centralized things are, the less free they're going to be by default because you've got a central group of jackoffs yanking the chain. Like, they, they can do whatever they want. Who are you, you know? Uh, yeah. like, like Immortal Techniques, money talks. So what the fuck I need to say to your girl? I got your I country a, in my pocket, motherfucker. That's a good call out. So anybody, even if, um, you know, politically you're on whatever side of whatever spectrum, you know, diversification outside of anyone else's control is always a good idea. It doesn't really matter what you believe politically. Getting out of the ability for somebody else to decide what to do with your assets and your wealth is always a good idea. And is that a good summary of of what you're proposing? Yeah, well, and also just like in general decentralize. People don't like the idea of mm. secession People don't like the idea of, like, breakaway uh, societies. They don't like the idea of parallel economies because all of these ter things are terrible things used by evil people that the U.S. government has decided are evil, so we all have to agree or we're evil too. <laughs> and so, like, effectively, we have to ignore the massive amount of history of centralization absolutely decimating freedom. Uh, you can talk about how Abraham Lincoln was a fantastic human being with a stovepipe hat and like his face totally wasn't gaunt, creepy and weird. He he was 100% a pure perfect angel um <laughs> and he freed the slaves. You can't talk about how Abraham Lincoln censored a bunch of newspapers, killed a bunch of civilians, suspended habeas corpus and uh didn't actually free the slaves. He said that they could be slaves if they were criminals, which instated Jim Crow laws, allowed for militarized police, mm. uh, created the fertile ground for the war on drugs and terror. You know, all of these things are because people, instead of realizing, hey, maybe we should be free, trusted their their lives to centralized authority. That's a mistake. And it's a mistake in your currency, too. Like, I could keep going. Like, there is literally no U.S. president that was that was good the best u.s president was harding and i'm not just saying that because i think we're related <laughs> um but like he also prevented a great depression by easing up off the backs of the common person mm -hmm. shrinking the size of the the, the state and being anti-interventionist saying i'm not going to go and put u.s bodies in foreign wars you fucking psychopath and people demonize him because he didn't go with the program, despite the fact that the Roaring Twenties basically followed what he did. Huh. I wonder why. And then there were <laughs> the two massive world wars, yeah. um, and the U.S. economy started to rely on a massive amount of centralization. They needed people to um, have a period of good times, so they let them have a period of good times, sort of let them out of the, uh, let, let them out of the fields and into the house for a little bit, and then, when it came time to crack down, they did that. Mm -hmm. And it's been getting worse and worse ever since because people have been demanding centralized solutions ever since. Like, the centralized solutions aren't going to be solutions for anybody but those who want more control. That's the universal truth. Okay. Well, we're running out of time, so I want to uh, thank you for stopping by. And I learned quite a bit today. Um, I hope everyone else learned as well. Where can people find you um, in case they want to learn more about what you're talking about or anything else that um, that you're researching or writing about? Well, I'm insanity is free on a lot of networks, not on Twitter because I got uh, banned. But I'm also uh, Jeremiah Exe there for now. Uh, ultimately, like I'm in a variety of places, just you know, being an asshole like normal. But, like, the, the two main projects I'm working on are uh, a documentary with Agoras Nexus, for whom I write and do some administrative stuff, and also Stateless Productions. I'm on the writing team for a new documentary that's already been announced, which is called Over Policed. Um, and you can go to the site to figure out more about that. All right, awesome. 
Well, thank you so much, Jeremiah. I super appreciate it. And uh, maybe when there's a development in terms of what uh, CBDC is doing, we'll get you back on and we can go over what new stuff is happening. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. Cool. Thank you, sir. We'll see you soon, hopefully.